the idea of having the media and communication in 2015 um, came about after we had our first event in 2012. The event was called the undergraduate, um, uh, the undergraduate seminar and product showcase. Um, in that event, we invited students from various classes to take part and presented their project in front of their colleagues and respective lecturers. That event received a warm response from students. Even most students suggested that event to be continued every semester. However, we don't have enough resources to do so. Uh, but this year, in the spirit of celebrating the Kuzia 25th anniversary, we decided to organize the media and communication day for the first time. And the event is much bigger now because we have event for four consecutive days. Starting from yesterday, we had IIUM FM Open Day and um, the IIUM FM crew together with Dr. Shafiza organize um, talks by MACP. Uh, they talk about music copyright. They also have Jamal Jamaluddin from Sinar, uh, Sinar FM and he talks about radio presentation to the crew and the student enjoy the session very much. And today is the second day of the Media and Communication Week and we are having the Journalism Day. And today the event mainly focuses for journalism students um, and they had a talk this morning on photo journalism. We had a very experienced speaker who came and talked to the students. Um, and um, after that, we have an opening ceremony. We officially launched uh, the Media and Communication Week by our respected team, Professor um, Ibrahim Zain. And, and all our fellow lecturers were there this morning. And uh, after that, we have a, a mock PC, mock press conference organized by Consolvia from Panama. And at 2 o'clock, we are going to have a forum on the underreporting of Islam and Muslims. Um, in one of the auditorium um, and the speakers are coming from Bernama Al Jazeera and we have a moderator to moderate the session and the reason why we're having this is we talk a lot about the underreporting um, of Islam and Muslim in the classroom but today we would like to hear uh, views coming from media practitioners how do they see this phenomenon Tomorrow is another big day for us. Uh, we are going to organize uh, two major events. The first one in the morning is on the uh, conflict management, is the forum, uh, mainly focusing on conflict management, uh, reputation management, and our speakers are coming from uh, PR, they are PR experts, so they will be talking about uh, these issues. And in the afternoon, we are going to organize mini chalk organized by IPRMSA. IPRMSA is the, um, the Institute of Public Relations Student Association, IIUM chapter. Um, and they are having this event, the Mini Chalk 1.0. And they are having people from PR consultancy and also from PDC to speak about um, various issues that relates to public relations. And on Friday, we are going to have our undergraduate seminar and product showcase. Um, uh, on that day, students will be presenting their project and the project range from research paper, videos, PSAs, so they are different formats altogether. And these are the good ones that are being selected by their lecturers. And we are hoping to uh, set a certain benchmark or a certain standard um, at that point. And we are also going to give away um, a special or mystery gift uh, to best paper, best presenter, best video, uh, just to motivate the student. Uh, so that's the un entire program. Yeah, that's the entire thing about the media and communication week. Okay, Assalamualaikum. My name is uh, Shakizad. Um, with regard to the uh, Media Communication Week that we had, we are having uh, this week. Okay, I am in charge of um, IIM.FM, which is the campus radio. So the venue uh, we had 
three programs actually. Uh, in the morning, we had a talk on music copyright, and this talk was given by the representatives from MACP on music authors' copyright um, protection. Uh, we had the, uh, Mr. Justin Johari, who came together with a few musicians. They informed our students about copyright and about how it is important for the students to understand the concept of intellectual property in the sense that uh, it helps the student to understand that if, for example, the students are musicians or they have a certain media product, that they can apply for copyright and protect their intellectual property. And uh, after that, we had an event, open studio, where we allowed uh, all students to come into our studio to uh, go on live uh, program. That means they were allowed to be a five minutes DJ. Lah. And after that, at two, we had a talk also by a famous DJ from Sinar FM, Mr. Jamal Jamaluddin. He came to give, uh, to share his experience of being a DJ for the past 34 years. So the students really enjoyed him, uh, his talk, because he was very lively and he told the students about how it is important for any media students or anyone who's interested to become a DJ to have good knowledge about everything. It's not just about voice or being able to speak well. It's about whether you have substance and topic or content when talking in the radio. And I thought that was a good advice for the students uh, to for that they for the students to realize that um, knowledge and information is the key to everything, even in media and communication. Thank you. Okay, so as part of the media and communication, is it being organized? Yes, yes. Yesterday, was yesterday, uh, Tuesday, until Friday, so we're actually organizing some media communication maker. So I'm here in charge of uh, journalism day. That's uh, some uh, program which is aimed to uh, encourage communication students who specialize in journalism and to expose them to journalism uh, in the area of uh, journalism itself. So, um, in this event, yeah, uh, the journalism program itself, we have a few events. So, we started with the journalism talk, which was held this morning, and then we had a uh, mock press conference as well that was conducted by Benama, uh, an experienced trainer, Ponsalia, Sahi, as we know. And then we went to a forum, which I think um, uh, was a topic, interesting topic that we. Um, all what we are going to have in the, in the forum itself, yeah, uh, it's something on media, but also in the issues of Muslims. Yes, focusing on the shepherd in shooting team. Uh, this is, I think, uh, an event uh, that uh, students are waiting for. Yeah, so trying to get um, a large number of audiences as well because we have um, experienced speakers as well, experienced panelists, yeah, or a panelist, a panelist among them, uh, Datu Azman Nujah, formerly from Bernama, and we had uh, another Bernama speaker, uh, Bernama, um, I would say, experienced speaker as well, eh, Datuk Yong. So we'll be here this afternoon and then we'll have uh, a journalist and experienced journalist from Al Jazeera. So this is a forum that um, I would say that I hope we'll be waiting for. Yeah. So um, I hope that um, you know uh, we get a club uh, for the forum for this forum. Okay, um, so I think that's a lot of journalism today. I, would, I, I, I really hope that uh, the students of IUM and of course um, outsiders as well would benefit a lot from um, this program of journalism day. Okay, uh, I'm the coordinator for communication student association of Kota. Uh, for this communication and media week, uh, their event was a theatre, Kosa Theatre Show on Tuesday, 8 to 11 p.m. And they had four production houses inside IAUM who participated in the event. They managed to sell 120 tickets and part of the proceeds from the ticket is going to charity. So they are donating 520 ringgit outside the Bajikan of Pikra Kaja, which is, I believe is a good place to be Kaja as part of the project. And I would say overall the event was a success and they managed to attract uh, audiences from IIUM and also uh, from outside. So the Pusat Theatre show was indeed overall a good contribution.
Okay, uh, as part of the Media and Communication Week, uh, we are also organizing the VR program, yeah? uh, especially involving VR uh, students. So the program will start tomorrow, Thursday. In the morning, we are going to have uh, a session, a forum session, whereby uh, we are going to discuss a topic on uh, crisis management. So uh, there will be there will be we call speakers, uh, a speaker like uh, uh, next slide, we are going to have primary speaker from the private sector, Wana Sharashi, as well as uh, someone, you know, corporate form, manager or, or director like that, uh, from the Malaysia. And uh, there will be probably also uh, uh, a official from KM, but hopefully, you know, in the afternoon, we are going to have a mini chalk session. Chalk is actually a concept, you know, derived from Asia. It's a conversation from Malaysia, whereby it is an acronym for chat, listen, and gaining knowledge. So in this session, we will have a sort of a normal session inviting uh, speakers from the VR industry. And, uh, they are going to talk to the students. They will be in, in an interactive session you know, involving the uh, professional from the VR industry. But this will be an opportunity for the students to interact with the professional and they can always ask and experience the practice uh, by the PR people in the industry so that they will have uh, an opportunity to learn uh, directly uh, from the source uh, what is the kind of task, what kind of job, what kind of challenges, uh, what kind of uh, preparation that you know they need to do before they graduate later on to the industry. So we help we, we hope that this is the opportunity to gain uh, for the students to gain knowledge. Uh, to listen, to gain knowledge at the same time, to share uh, their own uh, experience, you know, what kind of uh, what kind of lesson they study in class, whether or not when they go out later on, you know, they will be able to practice whatever they want in class. Okay, thank you. Uh, like Dr. Yong also, um, my friend Samir, uh, who, who invited me to appear in a few Al Jazeera programs. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to UIA, especially to my good friend Tuan Haji Hasnam, for inviting me after a long time. Uh, this is my first time in a few years here, uh, speaking to the students. And every time I meet students like this crowd, I always ask, why are the, I mean, this is a common question, but uh, I'd say, um, where are the boys? Because the, the girls always outnumber you. Uh, this is the typical Malaysia, but I was told in Western countries it's quite balanced. Anyway, it's a good sign. Uh, I always tell my friend that why we have, uh, how many world wars? Huh? Two, two, isn't it? Not three, huh? Two world wars because those countries were ruled by men, not women. Had it been ruled by women, there would be no world wars because they don't like violence. Uh, interesting statistics. Uh, the, this latest statistics of two years ago, um, in our prisons in the country, there we have, I think, prisons in all over the place in Malaysia. Uh, two years ago, the number of prisoners, uh, 45,000. Only 4% women or female. Well, well done, women. You don't commit crimes as do men like us. I think this is typical. In America, there are 4 million prisoners. Uh, I think high majority are maybe boys or men. Um, 
I think we are here today because uh, UIA uh, wants to discuss uh, specifically the uh, what the what we call uh, what Chal not not Charlie Hebdo, Charlie Hebdo and uh, Chapel Hill shooting. Eh? Uh, it appears to uh, many people that uh, there is great biasness in the Western media coverage of these two events. But I would like to think otherwise. Uh, as news animal, I would like to call after 40 years experience journalism like me and uh, Dr. Yong, uh, slightly less than 40 years, uh, we, uh, we call ourselves news animals, you know. Uh, news is our business. We would like to think that Western media places priority on what we call news value. No doubt, uh, my friend says, uh, if there are 10 Palestinians kill, uh, the story is so little compared to one uh, Israeli kill. But in the eyes of the Western media, the news value of one Israeli being killed is higher than uh, maybe 100. Unfortunately, I'm not saying it's right, but the news value, nilai berita dia lah. So what is nilai berita or news value? Uh, when we started journalism, our tutors will say news value is just like uh, when uh, when a dog bites someone, uh, it's no news value, but when someone bites a dog, there is a news value in it because it's dogs, I mean, it's every day I think dog will bite someone. Uh, but if someone bites a dog, then it's different. That's a news value. So uh, in the case of Charlie Hebdo, because the, the Western world really treasures or jealously guards freedom of the press, freedom of expression. It's seen by them as an a, attack on a front of freedom of expression. When you kill journalists and working in a uh, 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 cartoon magazine, I think, uh, Charlie Hebdo, and what more it's done by terrorists, and what more Muslim terrorists. So the stereotyping of them uh, it increases the news value as opposed to the Charlie, uh, what do you call it? Chapel Hill, I cannot get that right. Uh, Chapel Hill, as I think, if I read right uh, correctly, is done by a mentally deranged or mentally disturbed person, which happens almost every other week in America. Uh, one mad man will uh, shoot uh, a lot of uh, even uh, Tadika students, what is that, kindergarten students, no? It's not, it, some, somehow it had lost its news value as well killing by mentally disturbed Americans because for them owning ownership of a gun is also is an expression of their freedom freedom to own a gun every time anybody press them or whatever tries to uh, limit uh, try to restrict or curb the use of gun they will be voted out in because it tramples on your freedom freedom to own a gun so whatever freedom let alone uh, media freedom of expression uh, the terrorists uh, who kill maybe how many people in Charlie Hebdo in Paris? Twelve. Uh, it's a higher news value than a mentally deranged person shooting even a kindergarten student. So the news value of it. And when it comes to news value, please, I mean, I would like to think that the Western media has come of age. Their maturity is there. What news value means to them compared to uh, in our part of the world. Uh, for instance, my, I want to make my point like this. What I'm trying to say is this. For example, they, they do not have protocol in news, like CNN. President Obama has some functions a day, but never reported sometimes. But we, we will always report the Prime Minister or the album first. That's the, that's the protocol in our news. But to them, it's no news value. Some of the things that Obama said has lost its news value. So uh, this is why. There is a distinct difference in the way it covers, uh, and I'm not just trying to justify, but I'm putting myself in their shoes. Uh, for them, news value is uh, of paramount importance. Uh, for example, in Malaysia, a lot of our media has lost their sense or its sense of news value as well. You, you still get to read uh, stories which I consider has lost, has long lost its news value, but still reported on the front page. For example, every year, someone comes out with a re re uh, ranking of the richest men in Malaysia, or women. For the last 15 years, I think, Robert Koch and Ananda Krishnan have been the number one and number two richest men in Malaysia. To me, there is absolutely no news value in this uh, news, because, of course, they, they become richer. The rich, the rich becomes richer, and uh, they're not going to be a poorer. So, 
Every year you will find these two men makes front page news because they are number one, number two richest men in Malaysia. But it's, it has lost its news value already. There is no news value, but our media still puts this kind of news on the front page. Uh, you, you, uh, for example, uh, also uh, recently there was a helicopter crash in which some VIPs were killed. One major newspaper put, instead of telling the uh, seven kill or one of them a uh, very senior aide of the Prime Minister, one major newspaper put so and so orders investigation as the main story. I mean, there is no news value in some, someone ordering an investigation up following a plane crash. It is a standard operating procedure, but it's still on the front page. Someone orders probe. Uh, so, uh, we still have a long way to go in terms of appreciating what is news value. So, uh, which is why there is a difference in the way uh, CNN or Trips Story uh, and uh, Charlie Hebdo definitely is uh, of very high news value because it's done um, maybe perceived terrorism as opposed to non-terrorism. Terrorism is the thing uh, now. The, the whole world is uh, trying to uh, combat or fight. Now the latest one is IS, eh? Islamic State. So uh, you will find a lot of uh, acts committed by IS will be of course hot news or breaking news as opposed to other uh, less important news. So, um, for example, uh, another example I would like to cite is a very recent interview which the Prime Minister had with one interviewer. Uh, the Prime Minister is ready to answer any questions you ask him. He is capable, more than capable to give you very good answers. But, this particular interview, I mean, how many of you, uh, of you have uh, seen that interview or read, you must have read in the newspapers. One newspaper described it as a no holes but interview. No holes but mean the interviewer asked anything, uh, a very hard, very tough question. I am very disappointed with this interviewer because uh, he has lost an opportunity to interview the Prime Minister and ask him very tough question. The questions to me are quite weak. Uh, although the Prime Minister explains this and that, but uh, they should not have used uh, a very inexperienced interviewer to interview the Prime Minister. I think uh, it was a lost opportunity. It would have been a bigger news value had the interviewer been a very experienced one. And he's not even, I think this is the first time this, this guy appears on TV. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do. That's why when you have a program like Hard Talk over BBC, or even Christian Aman Po, they will come up with uh, sometimes the the person he, he or she interviews will be very nervous because uh, they face a very uh, experienced interviewer. But uh, so uh, the bottom line of what I'm trying to tell is why this, the difference or the distinction in the way uh, the media reports uh, one news and the other is in its news value. Uh, my friend Al Jazeera also uh, has come of age. They they also uh, prioritize on news value, but uh, sometimes, of course, Al Jazeera being uh, owned by an uh, Islamic country, yeah, of course they will give more priority to uh, Islamic news in, in terms of uh, they will they will be uh, more careless. I mean, sorry, careful about not to offend. But in the eyes of the Western media, they they, they don't have this kind of sensitivity and they paid a very heavy price in Charlie Hebdo. So many um, journalists got killed. I think I stop here for a while and I let my uh, colleague uh, Dr. Yong to uh, give his views. He's ready with his iPad. I have already spoken all the important points. But anyway, I try my best. Um, fellow colleagues, uh, Prof. Uh, Arab Sarabi, uh, people who have last heard me here, uh, Dr. Haini, and some friends uh, from, from the media whom I have known, and journalism students of UIA. Okay. Religion is uh, often a very touchy subject. Uh, people have been known to kill because of religion. So I was asked to approach on the subject of uh, the Chapel Hill shooting in which three Muslims were killed by a man in North Carolina. I do not know about 
any downplaying of the case. But maybe there was because I was only aware of the case after Dr. Aini emailed me. <laughs> so probably there was, yeah? Because it is it is just so it wasn't played in the in the local media, right? Um so sometimes uh, I don't get to see much television because uh, uh, we have our source of news from the usual sources of news portals and all that, uh, also from local newspapers. But then again, I just like to see sometimes it depends on how the editors play the story. Do they broadcast it or do they not broadcast it, right? Say, I, I just want to move aside to another subject slightly. Uh, quite, quite, in, quite interesting. It's in Hong Kong. Uh, happened a few days ago. Uh, this very senior um, insurance executive came over to Hong Kong about 15 years ago, and he wanted a maid, and he got a Filipino maid. And some one thing led to the other. He had a child with the Filip with the Filipino maid, and subsequently he had another child. But the um, they were not married, and I don't know how the the birth of the the two of his children were not reported, and because they're not reported, they don't have identification, and they did not go to school. The only thing that they went to uh, was to tuition centers, okay, and uh, and whenever they there was a formal dinner function, a formal party. Only the husband went. The wife will be in the background. They are not seen together. And they are only seen together on weekends at the park and all that. So this is, uh, it is a marriage that was not registered. The birth that was not registered. And um, last Sunday, the, the, the daughter, the elder daughter went to serve. She just jumped down from the bathroom window. To me, I thought it was very significant about somebody, top executive, going to Hong Kong. You know, it's a very interesting story. You, 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 you have this person as a, your mate, and suddenly you fall in love, and then you have children, and yet you do not register. So these are things which uh, uh, gets to me, you know. But anyway, um, the latest I heard about this Chapel Hill shooting is that the accused will be tried for murder. And, and if he's found guilty, then he will get the death penalty. So this means that there is reporting. If not, I wouldn't have known. Okay? So there has been uh, much debate about this case, whether it was a parking dispute or was it a hate crime over Muslim neighbors, you know, this sort of thing. Um, but we don't know for sure until the trial gets underway. Okay, uh, we must appreciate, like what Dr. Sri Asman said, the U.S. is a place where people can get guns easily. Two years ago, a Malaysian soldier who went for training in the U.S. also tried to smuggle a gun into Malaysia. Nothing has been heard about that. Maybe you all should follow up on this case. Kanya Ishamuddin, what happened to that man? Is he in jail in the United States or is he somewhere? No, it's very interesting, you know, because... Anyway, because of the easy access to guns, we hear of shootings on campuses, parking lots, cinemas. You know, that day there was, there was, a, there was a shooting in a cinema because, some, because of some, some major film that was shown and somebody was making noise, that one also had a shooting. So, so, so Chapel Hill is not an isolated case. The issue here is how to put away these guns from these modern day cowboys. I always say that there are a lot of cowboys in America, they still want to shoot, ride a horse and shoot. So, so what? I do young journalists want to do about it, you know, perhaps to delve into the issue of owning guns in America, you know, and, and, and do, do, do
do exposes, do in-depth reporting on commentaries. Why do people want to carry guns themselves and not let the police uh, take care of the security? Surely there's something. Or maybe we can, maybe if you investigate enough, then maybe most of the Americans want to become cowboys. Yeah? So, um, I suppose we should not talk about being a Muslim journalist or a Christian journalist or a Jewish journalist. We should be talking about journalists who stop. You know? There's plenty to write about. Take the case of Boko Haram. This this band of married men in northern Nigeria. I was told they have kidnapped 2,000 women and girls, forcing them to become their wives, wanting them to become cooks and all that, and beheading the men. So, but to the skeptics among you know, in this world, they say this one Western propaganda, let me propaganda or You know, just because the articles are written by the New York Times. Associated Press, you know, and kami tak percaya, you know. But these are written by mainstream journalists, you know, about these guys who want to change the world in the name of religion. You know, that's why they have asked people to go and pray in the in the open sky. You know, those people who walk a little bit crooked, they don't like the kind of walk, also they get shot in the head. So why is this so, you know? So these are things which we, we as journalists, if you have the chance, you have got to go and find out why do these people do this? Why do people hide behind the name of religion to go and achieve their aims, you know? So, I like to say this, religion is a very personal thing, it's a very private thing, one shouldn't force people to join another religion and he or she should be free to choose some people are born into that religion some people embrace that religion so so it, it is something which shouldn't be forced because it's how you believe and how are you how you communicate with god that's it so on another subject about you know we're talking about islamophobia or islam the kind of thing i ask the Caliphate, they have, they have, after the Ir Iraqi uh, troubles and the troubles in Iran and Syria and all that, you've got this group of people wanting to also have a name for themselves uh, in the name of religion. And we have about two or three hundred Malaysians wanting to be there as well, to carry guns, you know, the kind of thing. But I suppose. There is so much that we can do in Malaysia that we don't have to go and carry guns over there and fight other people's war. You know? As journalists, we should be actually, you know, writing about things where what can the young people in Malaysia help this country to become a more dynamic country? 